Good morning and welcome to worship today, August the 1st. If you're joining me in worship in this way, it's probably because uh, you're not, not able to come to church and be with us in person. And at the moment, we're not live streaming the services from church. So instead, uh, online, we have these services made up of recordings, highlights, if you will, from some of the services that we've produced over the past, well, nearly 18 months. And I do believe and hope that uh, we can perfectly, legitimately, and uh, in, in a very real way, worship God uh, despite the fact that, the, that what's joining us together is uh, recorded material uh, rather than live material. And I hope that uh, you find that you do meet with God in this service. Just like to say a little bit about what's going on today. Um, in our live service today, we're having part one of a special series called Animals in the Bible. And part one the subject is the lamb. And if you want to have an opportunity to see my sermon from that service, it's going to be recorded, just the sermon, and then posted as a YouTube video later today. And uh, the link for that will be posted on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page and group, and on our WhatsApp group. Uh, you can also ask me to uh, send you the link by email if you want. Uh, in the recorded uh, material that uh, comprises this service today, there's a sort of connection because our theme is the Good Shepherd. And that theme is picked up right from the start with our opening hymn. Uh, other people taking part in the service today include James Chasty, who gives us our Bible reading, and Audrey, Audrey Bonford, who is leading our prayers. And of course, be aware that the prayers, well, they were uh, they're from the 13th of September 2020, so our prayers will have some references that were topical then, but are still, I think, very valid for us today. There's also material from uh, January of this year and from as long ago as early May last year. Um, in a moment, we're going to have our first hymn, which is a setting of the Lord's My Shepherd. It's one of the first ones that we recorded uh, by recording it at home, different people recording instruments, voices, and then it all being mixed together. Technically, it's not quite as good as some of the uh, ones that we produced later, but it is lovely, and not least because it includes Meg Bailey uh, with her harp. So before we have that opening hymn, uh, can I once again welcome you and lead us in an opening prayer? Almighty God, we thank and praise you that we can come to you in worship. And that as we do, we are joined not only with you, but with one another. Lord, accept our praises, even as we follow and are led by worship, which is made up of recordings. Lord, draw us to yourself and draw us closer to one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, 
shepherd and I hope you enjoyed it too. As we meet together this morning, let us bring before God the things that we've said or done that we know were wrong with the words of our confession. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And the declaration of God's promise of love and forgiveness. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And it's time for our Bible reading now, and our Bible reading today is going to be brought to us by James Chasty. From the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. These words immediately conjure a peaceful and reassuring scene. Green fields, sunshine, newborn lambs, grazing sheep, a familiar sight if you live in or near Potch Wrigley. Perhaps for some of us also, they conjure an image familiar from a thousand religious paintings. Jesus himself, calm features framed by long hair and beard, staff in hand, and a tiny lamb at his side, or even carried on his shoulder. Indeed, we may well be reminded of Jesus' own story of the lost sheep, the one who wandered off only to be found by its shepherd and carried safely home. There are times in life when we need such reassurance and calm. Reminders of the inner peace and tranquility, the safety and security which Jesus promises us. It's surely no coincidence that the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, is often used at funerals with its comforting image of the one who guides and guards us through life, leading us to green pastures and to still waters. The one whose rod and staff steer us even through the valley of the shadow of death itself. And the Good Shepherd tells us that he's not just here for the bad times, but for all times. He has come, he says, that we might have life, life in all its fullness. Here at Pot Shrigley, we are blessed with a number of sheep farmers caring for their flocks with considerable skill and commitment. Indeed, it's thanks to them that the wonderful sight of sheep and lambs graces our landscape. But they'd be the first to tell you that it's not all peace and tranquility. The recent lambing season has been a tough time for farmers and for flock alike. It always is. Some lambs and mothers have been lost to illness, to accident or to predators. Read again through Jesus' words in John's Gospel. And that's not all sweetness and light either. For every phrase describing the commitment, the care of the Good Shepherd, there is also an opposing phrase describing very different bad shepherds. All who came before me, he says, are thieves and bandits. Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. And Jesus also talks about shepherds who don't care about the sheep because they are hired. The flock doesn't belong to them. So who are these bad shepherds that Jesus is talking about? His first hearers would have instantly recognised that this is how the scriptures describe those leaders, be they kings, priests or prophets, who have cared only for themselves and not for the people that they were called to serve and to lead. That is what it means to be a bad shepherd. And of course, religious and political leaders who mislead and exploit those for whom they are supposed to care are not confined to the pages of the Bible. Our history, and indeed the present day, holds many more examples. But why did Jesus introduce this jarring note why reassure and calm us with the image of the Good Shepherd only to unsettle us with this talk of thieves and bandits, of bad shepherds? He does it to warn us. If we are to know peace, security, indeed life in all its fullness, we need to make sure that we are putting our trust in or following the right shepherd, the Good Shepherd. Some of those bad shepherds might make very tempting offers. They might rattle the feed tin very loudly. They might use any number of ways to invite or force us into their sheepfolds. 
False religious leaders, for instance, often make very alluring claims, which can seem attractive compared with a sometimes difficult path the Christian is called upon to walk. But their offer is ultimately empty. In the modern world, it's not just religions which can hold out false promises. There is a widespread belief that we can find peace and fulfilment in any number of things. Money, sex, possessions, popularity, success. None of these things are wrong in and of themselves, but it is not they who will bring us to a place of peace, tranquility and security. There is only one shepherd who will do that. I hope that you will put your trust in the one and only Good Shepherd. Of course, you might ask me, how can we be sure that he is the Good One and that those other so-called shepherds will ultimately cheat us? That he tells the truth while they tell lies? That he will deliver on his promises while they won't? proof is found in this. As Jesus states, and as we remembered only three weeks ago, the Good Shepherd is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. Let's affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to be led in our prayers of intercession by Audrey Bomford. God of all power, you created this world, bringing order out of confusion. You made each one of us in your own image, your fingerprint on every soul. We praise and worship you, and our hearts are stirred with each sound and sight of your creation. And we proclaim with the psalmist King David, The Lord is my shepherd. Thank you that you are the ever-present one. Thank you that Jesus said he was the good shepherd and we, like his sheep, are known by our name. We pray you will have mercy on our world, your creation, where famine, drought and disease destroy the earth's ability to grow food. May all endeavours to save the planet from self-destruction be earnestly acted upon by leaders, governments, and by every community, and by each one of us. Thank you that it is the young who so often lead the, take the lead in challenging and promoting change in habits and selfishness of mankind. Good Shepherd, you call us to be followers, and so, as your church, like a flock of sheep, may we listen to your voice more attentively and give us an awareness of your presence in worship and in daily work. We remember before you all flocks that meet in churches and especially we pray that you will send encouragement to our mission partners in Malawi and Thailand, for Johnny and Anne and Magumi and Helen, be their good shepherd as they cry to you, hear their voice, feed them and answer their prayer. Good Shepherd, be with all who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Save the people of Yemen, 
bring peace and great healing to that land. Protect us from further increases in cases of coronavirus. May care for others replace casual attitudes to safety. Be present with medical staff who work to catch up on operations. Be with families who grieve as they watch loved ones suffer in this valley of shadow. Comfort those who mourn and renew their strength. We lift to you now all known to us. Good Shepherd, bring them through this valley. Good Shepherd, we long for the paths of righteousness to be made clear and followed by our government and all who lead our country through these days of uncertainty and the unknown in deciding what to open, when to lock down and how to deal with those who don't seem to care. May righteous decisions be made in negotiations with EU leaders. Bring a willingness to compromise where necessary and to seek what is fair in trade deals and what is best for the situation of border controls. Lord Jesus, you spoke to Simon Peter saying, feed my sheep and feed my lambs our children. We pray that you will sustain and encourage those who teach, who protect, who nurse, who nurture and who bring up children. Whatever age or stage, ability or limitation, they are most precious in the pasture of life. Bless and protect the most vulnerable. Encourage and bring hope and purpose to those who have suffered the frustration and fury during exam result time. May education be a priority to our government and not, seemingly, a necessity so adults are freed to work. And the psalmist wrote, You anoint my head with oil. And we lift to you all who have an anointing from you to work in celebrating and proclaiming the good news of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, as the Saviour and Carer for all. Bless our Bishop of Chester, Mark, and anoint him with wisdom in guiding his flock. Bless Vicar David and Kim, Reverend Steve Murphy and Anne, and Reverend Lynn Bowden and Paul in their ministry among us. Lord Jesus, Good Shepherd, may we know as we go into each day that prayer does not end because we don't say prayers or simply walk out of church. May we live in a consciousness that through your presence we can pray without words, be thankful, encourage each other and trust that you hear us when our souls silently long for your peace in the concerns of everyday life. And we close with a prayer of Saint Benedict. O gracious Holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive thee, diligence to seek thee, eyes to behold thee, a heart to meditate upon thee, and a life to proclaim thee through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we've come to uh, our final hymn. And today we close with a wonderful hymn, in Christ alone.
In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. It's my prayer that uh, you will find your hope in him in this coming week and in the weeks that lay beyond, uh, whatever that might mean in your life. But not only that, that others may through you also find that hope, which our world needs so much at this time, but which our world has always needed. Well, I do thank you for joining me and for joining one another in worship today. And uh, as we uh, close, we have our blessing and our dismissal. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.